What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back, delicious friends, to another episode of Submariner, where we have actually not gone underwater yet. We have not submerged, as it were. I would assume that would be submerged. So, we're in Irem. Irem is kind of an interesting place. I don't exactly remember the history of it, but it's basically you go no further east as far as the game world of Sunless Sea is involved. Going further east is not a thing that anybody does. Now, I did want to show this off before we leave this place because there are some interesting features here that you do want to be aware of. If you're going to play the game at an upper level, you need to be aware. Like, Irem has some pretty cool things that add a little bit more optionality, I guess, to your game, or a little bit more functionality. Uh, you can trade stories here. That's a good thing to do. You can get extraordinary implications for echoes. You can buy secrets here, which I think is the biggest thing that a player needs to be worried about. If you can buy secrets, that means that eventually you can level up as much as you want. You just have to have good cash flow. We're sitting on 15 fuel right now, and we're sitting on 12 supplies. While that's not the hugest amount, in the previous episode we did finish our business with Mr. Sachs, which is a really, really good thing. You don't want to deal with that. You can also buy fuel here if you really, really need to. It's a little bit overpriced. It's twice the prices in London, but if you're stuck and you need fuel, you can get it here. Supplies are a little bit more expensive as well, but by no means are they as exploitative as they are in some places. Did I get my... the House of the Amber Sky. We need Dark Drop Coffee Beans for that. Okay. We don't have dark drop coffee, so we're not going to worry about that for a little bit. Let's go ahead and set sail for the south. What I'd like to do today is we're going to come back down this way, and then we're going to cut west to London. And that should give us a very, very, very nice haul of echoes from there. Once we've got the purse full of echoes, we're going to go back down to Port Carnelian. And we're going to try and convert our ship into a submarine, because as we've been playing the game, we have been seeing a lot of submerged things that we can interact with, and oh, how I would love to interact with them. There are no islands within the z bass range. Welcome back. Uh, it's actually a lovely little Tuesday right now. This is one of the few times you're going to see an episode that's almost current. I recorded this the day before it goes live. I do batch record for people that might be wondering as to how my operation functions. Essentially, I record like seven episodes at a time. That way I can actually have like days off and stuff like that, and I'm not constantly recording and working on things. We have what looks like a hostile ship over on that side, the Empire of Hands. I'm pretty sure this is the place where the monkey men live. Indeed, we approach the Empire of Hands. Let us clasp our souls tight lest the Pentecost apes take them from us. So, essentially down in this place, there's these groups of monkeys that live on these islands, and all they want to do is steal your soul. They love stealing souls. It's like what they live for. If they can steal a soul, they have had a successful monkey day. While normally I would not know what comprises a successful monkey day, in the case of the Empire of Hands, any monkey that steals a soul, he's done a pretty good job today. He's done about as well as a monkey is expected to do as far as that is concerned. There are some things we can accomplish here, and I think I can go underneath this bridge right here. Please don't crash into the bridge. I mean, our hull is fine. Yeah, it should be good. We'll swing back around. We'll do this event right here. This should be a fairly interesting little adventure. I don't think I ever got down to Port Stanton while I was doing my other playthroughs of Sunless Sea, but it's a useful place. It's got a couple of storylines here that can be quite lucrative. Pulling into port. In the name and by the power of her enduring majesty, a trade embargo and quarantine is absol in absolute perpetu or perpetuity has hereby been declared on the Empire of Hands. No ship of London is to permit aboard a Pentecost ape without express a prior permission of the Admiralty. Any and all acts of spiritage are prohibited. That's the transfer of souls, in case you didn't know. Three, they know what they did. Beware of stowaways and keep a tight grip on your soul. The excerpt from the Standard Naval Regulations, Volume 4. With the regulations in mind, it is a surprise to be greeted by a mere itchy monkey in a tattered yellow robe, barely walking with the help of a ceremonial staff. Hello, cries the mayor, in a broken voice of one not yet used to human speech. Come, make yourselves at home! All souls welcome in the bountiful empire of hands! The crew shifts uncomfortably. They know the stories. It'll take more than the natural beauty of this place to make them risk shore leave here. So... We can sail the Empire of Hands if we wanted to, or we can go to Port Stanton and we can deal with the monkeys. It's really the call of the player, but let's sail the Empire of Hands first. We can take a scouting trip to Sovereign Island. A wooden palace stretches across the whole island, passage to it lit by a field of tiny glim buoys. Many boats circle the island, all keeping their distance. The one that gets closest is an extended rowboat painted in yellows, whites, and reds. Four servant monkeys strain at the oars, while its true passenger sits in comfort behind a gauze curtain. Just for a moment, an eye catches yours, but only for a second. It would not do for a high-souled ape to see something so beneath its notice. Oh yeah, the monkey, so... 
the monkeys, the more souls they have, the more powerful they are in this island. So a monkey that has like thousands of human souls is like a nobleman or almost like a king, essentially. Whereas a monkey that only has a couple souls is like in good company or is, I guess, held in good standard. A monkey with no souls is an outcast. Today, the sprawling palace is called the Wild Wheeled Court. Tomorrow, who knows? The world of the Pentecost apes is one of cruel whimsy, where stolen traditions last only as long as their amusement. We can gain assets to the court if we had monkey business no more than 29. We have one, but we need a gift for the monkey emperor in order to go before him. So the gates are guarded by two armored monkeys that look would look adorable if not for the blood on their bayonets. Humans are not welcome without an invitation or a worthy gift for the emperor. That gift can be your soul, by the way. I wouldn't do it, though. There is more zailing to be done today. We'll take some effort to ingratiate yourself here. Perhaps if you could find something on one of the other islands. Let's go to the Ash Isthmus. Neither man nor ape claims this volcanic remnant between islands. Haunted, they say. But that's ridiculous. Of apes and monkeys. The trip offers a little time to think on the pennies. Technically, they are monkeys rather than apes, but it is not tactful to remind them of this. To their high-souled faces, the accepted name is Pentecost Apes. And private, though, the bitchy monkeys is about as common. It is, as one might say, an ad hominoid assault. <laughs> I forgot about that joke. Black beaches give way to an oasis of gently glowing trees and the scent of rotting flowers. We can enter the forest. Parasynthetic vegetation thrives in the empire of hands, fertile soul and er, soil and cool humidity. Wide natural paths run between clumps of trees, softly lit by a dim green glow and the occasional glimmer of false stars through the canopy. Only the cracking of leaves and the soothing sounds of water break the serenity of this volcano-forged paradise. We can hunt for supplies with our pages quality here. Okay, we can relax in a hot spring. Steam and a hint of sulfur gently rise from a secluded natural pool flanked by trees and mushrooms. Or we can return to the Admiralty. Let's relax in a hot spring. You slip out of your itchy clothes and into the welcoming caress of hot, deep water. The salts and sweats of zailing life melt away as you simply float, bare and free. Above, fall stars glimmer bright enough to be worth wishing upon. All around, the glow of trees casts ambient calm on the silent peace. How long has it been since you had a moment like this? Since London? Longer? We can spare a thought for our lover. We can think for the past. We can think for the future. Or we can think for the east. Let's think for our lover. What is the likely last doing right now? Are you on her mind like she's on yours? Oh, those nights in the wolf stack docks. The noise. The passion. The delightful filth. The hot water hugs you tight as you remember her touch. Your last words before departing. The half smile almost, but not quite blossoming into completeness. How long will it be before you feel the touch of skin on skin once again, or wake to see her sleeping brow, always so furrowed as soft and as calm as the Z itself? Wait, what was that? It sounded like giggling. A tiny blonde girl perches, waiting on a rock. Her innocent grin is spiced with mischievous glee. She giggles like an imp at the look of your face at being caught bathing in her hot spring and the one that floods onto it as she scoops up your clothes. Shipwrecked as a baby, raised by the Empire of Hands, she now plays in between the worlds of apes and men, never quite one or the entirely of the other. Um, we can make a desperate swimmer, we can demand that she puts them down. Put those down. The anger only makes it funnier. The monkey foundling sticks out her tongue, grins, and scampers off into the forest on all fours, your stolen possessions on a leather bag slung over her back. Her giggling echoes from deep in the forest as you splash after her in your goosebumps. We can chase the monkey foundling, we can fly upon them, let them stare. Let's chase her. Damn it, you cannot return to your crew like this. Into the forest, the branches scrape against your skin, the damp mud squidges between your toes. There is no sign of the monkey foundling, but her tracks are easily followed. The quest for dignity. A forest clearing, the footprints lead here. She has not even attempted to hide them. It's as if she wants you to follow. Your hand slaps to your stinging buttock. The little stone lands in the dirt as a familiar giggle comes from above. You look to see the monkey foundling dangling upside down from a branch by her legs, a blowpipe in hand and a bag just out of your reach, tantalizingly so. Taking a deep breath, you politely, very politely request that she return your damned clothes now. The monkey foundling listens and gives it some thought, tapping her blowpipe against her lips as she decides. Say please. She grins. Please? There, it's said. Pretty please? Um, you could throw a rock at her or you could say pretty please. Pretty please? With a cherry on top if she likes? Pretty, pretty, please, she adds, stifling a giggle. Oof, pretty, 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 please? 
Pretty, 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 please. Your anguished plea echoes through the trees. You appear to have pretty, pretty pleased her, and she decides you deserve a reward. She fishes in her bag and generously throws you a sock. A single, solitary sock. She leans a few, or she learns a few new swear words as she races off across the branches near doubled up with laughter. I can pursue her, or I can say enough of this. Let's pursue her. I succeeded! You just spot the loop rope in time to jump over it, avoiding what would otherwise have been a nasty trip into the air. The monkey family looks disappointed. This is not one of your regrets. The monkey foundling slides down a vine in front of you. She sticks out her tongue and scampers through a break in the trees. It is a place that skunks would think twice before entering if the Empire of Hands had such creatures. The monkey foundling, of course, is unconcerned, as much at home here as high in the branches or running the forest paths. She almost dances effortlessly across a thin fallen tree that crosses the mire surrounded by the foulest bubbling mud that has ever invaded your nostrils. She balances in the middle, daring you to try and follow. Uh, it looks like I can use 60 irons to get her. Though the crossing is treacherous, particularly when one, one's hands are torn between modesty and balance, let's try. It is slow going. Your muddy feet slide against the thin trunk as it buckles and strains under your weight. Inch by inch, step by step, you slowly make your way across. Until bored, the monkey foundling suddenly jumps up and down hard. The tree rolls under your feet. Your balance fails. You slip, tumble, and are embraced by a marsh whose smell will never leave you. You fight to the surface, streaming brown and dripping green, violently coughing up a gagging throat full of the foul slime. The monkey foundling sits cross-legged in the safety of the trees, holding her nose as she points and laughs. She dances and pirouettes on the tree stump, saluting as you approach. A screeching Pentecost ape, ambush, drops from the branches. The shock on the monkey foundling's face makes it clear this is not a part of her little game. Its rage is focused entirely upon her, the ghost of the ash isthmus, and the bright soul with which it can uplift itself to glory. It limps from some trap earlier, its fur blood soaked it's fur blood soaked and glistening it lunges at the monkey foundling who half rolls half falls off the stump and yelps as it catches her by the leg she rolls shrieks her own howl and she lashes back with a kick that shatters fang and splits his lip this only further enrages the frothing ape it strikes ah uh, let's help her she meant you no harm she was only playing you reach for a stone and bring it crashing down on the distracted ape's head its skull cracks dampness spreading it collapses to the ground hard it is not a child's face that looks up at you. Still, you reach a hand down. The monkey foundling just stares at it for a moment, something human returning as the adrenaline fades. For a moment, it almost looks as though she will take it, but no. She leaps up on her own, bounding away towards the dark safety of the jungle, and then stops, hesitates. She looks back and tilts her head, beckoning you to follow. It is a look that suggests the game is over, but perhaps not yet quite finished. Is this where the monkey foundling lives? Why would she lead you to here, of all places, a small hut in the middle of the forest? The monkey foundling herself is nowhere to be seen, but she has left you something. It sits outside the hut, carefully placed by a large, happy face drawn in the black sand, a little prize for being such a good sport. Your clothes, however, are nowhere to be seen. Of course, as the monkey part of her would no doubt demand, where would be the fun in that? We have an outlandish artifact. This all return to the ship. The crew reacts with an unexpected amount of sympathy to your naked return, which you say is exactly none. By the time you board the ship, every last crew member is on hand to see and cheer, with more than a couple letting off flares as impromptu fireworks. It is many, many days before the needling ceases, and you are able to give an order without first scouring it for innuendo. On the plus side, it does boost at least the rest of the ship's mood while it lasts, and you have a new treasure for your collection. You've had worse days. I suppose we'll zail. A scouting trip to Fountainhead Island. The Empire of Hands is hardly as old as they pretend, but mimicry and theft infuses their whole culture. If the Pentis have come to think that rulers should be buried in ancient temples, then it is ancient temples they will build. It would hardly be the first time their attempts to mirror humanity have entirely missed the point. There's a temple in the forest. Sure, in a clearing of parasynthetic trees looms an imposing structure of wooden stone. It stretches through the forest in a number of styles, each designed by the whims of the latest Pentecost apes who felt it needed to be made grander. It would take a dedicated team to break in and uncover its secrets. Perhaps you will bring one later. Okay, so let's go ahead and we will scout that and return to the boat. And then finally, a thin pillar of greasy yet appetizing smoke rises from the only human settlement in the Empire. The Admiralty has never stated precisely why it seeks to keep the Empire confined, though most opposition to it fades once the said opposers actually encounter a Pentecost ape. 
They have been easy to corral, however. Though they do not lack wit, there is not an inventive bone in their hairy bodies, and no amount of stolen humanity has taught them the art of creating engines. There's a lost treasure hunter, or we can go to the village. Let's go to the treasure hunter. North for each city the bats have brought down. He wipes his brow. You seen a big X on the ground by any chance? I've got these four map pieces that got me this far and said X would mark the spot. But I can't find an X anywhere. He looks at the map sadly. It should be right here, it says. Now how am I supposed to dig? He's too busy to talk right now, but as that he'll be in the village later if you want to trade adventuring supplies. Oh yeah, don't try to meet balls, he warns, getting back to his search. You, uh, just don't want to do that. Okay, to the village. An explosion almost takes off your head. Sorry about that, booms the boisterous pirate, lowering a smoking blunderbuss as bits of shattered tree rain down. New arrival, are we? Well, if you haven't got a tail, you're all right by me. He squints, momentarily suspicious. You don't have a tail, do you? Wouldn't put it past the thieving little buggers to go shaving one of their own. Wouldn't know fair play if it kicked them up right in their arse. His voice is louder than his blunderbuss. The congealed meat juices on his thick beard are not, are better not considered. I can dine at his table. However, we will return to the boat. I don't trust it. The Z is quiet. The journey is pleasingly uneventful. You have not been eaten by cannibal pirates, all things considered. A successful trip. Perhaps you can use the information you've gained to prepare a comprehensive port report. Hooray! All of them warrant further attention. For now, though, it would be best to see if your initial discoveries can whet the interest of anyone back home. And so now we've got the comprehensive port report for the Empire of Hands. We can go to Port Stanton. There's not a whole lot going on here. It seems as though almost every single location... Go on, surely. Parents said that a jungle holds many dangers. Step carefully. There's no authority beyond the fence. Audience with the flea-ridden mare. He's not busy. No appointments are required. The flea-ridden mare scratches himself on a chair made of crates, surrounded by boxes of long-rotten trade goods. As a five-souled ape, he would be able to petition for membership of the court, but for now, the trade embargo has left him strapped on the outside, a three-souled overseer with no talent for order. Let's see... In better times, being the overseer of Port Stanton gave the incumbent their pick of visitors to the Empire. Now it is a thankless a task as any to be found in the Neath. We can sell our soul to the mayor for 200. Acquire fresh supplies for 20 echoes. Oddly, little of the Empire fan's natural bounty is edible. The monkeys will help you find the good stuff for a fee. We can get emergency fuel. Or we can excuse ourselves. I think everything looks okay. We'll excuse ourselves for now. And then there's a zeppelin over here. Two monkey guards wielding rifles and rusty bayonets block the bridge. This is not for your eyes, outsider. Avert them and walk away. Walk faster. Good human. I guess it's not for us. Having done everything there is to do here, and actually eating up almost an entire episode doing it, I suppose we'll head southwards. Take a look at my map here. We've got a bit more southerly to go. But then when we cut west, my hope had been by the end of the episode to be all the way back in London. Although I'm thinking at this point, that's a dream... To which I should probably not look too fondly. We've got a buoy down here. Go ahead and turn on the lights as we weave. Let me fire out the Z-Bat, although it went the wrong direction. I don't know if it's going to be entirely useful. No islands within the Z-Bat's range. I like this game. It's a quiet game. It's like an introspective game that you can play like at 2 in the morning, you know, on your couch with your laptop when everybody else in your house is asleep. That's when I love to play this game the most. That's like my prime time for this game as I love... Ooh, what is that? That's not new, I recall. Behemoth Stash. Behemoth Stashes, as I recall, are actually not that difficult to kill. There's something underwater some distance to the south. Yeah, Behemoth Stash. He's actually got mustaches. That's why he's called a Behemoth Stash. I see an island, though. It looks somewhat basaltic and volcanic. Maybe we find something useful down here? What did we find underwater, by the way? Can I mark that on my chart? No, I cannot. I, I desperately wanted to mark it. We've got Yvonne's Way. Okay, also looks like we've got a fog bank down here. Oh, we found something. Beautiful, beautiful something. What is this? Leslie's Harbor. I don't exactly recall this location, but it seems familiar. Oh, Estval. I remember Estval. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out Estval, shall we? Sun. A great beam of sunlight bathes the island. Squint into the dazzle far above. There's a hole in the roof. In that light, you see beaches of white gold sand. Trees heavy with bright fruit. 
the reds and greens of the surface. We can investigate the ruins. There was some sort of installation here in what looks like a handsome country house. Who was here and what happened to them? Let's do that first. A garden overgrown with berry bushes, a wooden trestle table set for a meal, chairs strewn with bones, a half dozen skeletons, a red-breasted bird perches on a grinning cranium, it cocks an eye at you, and bursts into song, a liquid thrilling sound. It seems unperturbed as you approach to poke through the bones. No signs of violence, no fire, no bullets, no bites. These people died peacefully sitting down to breakfast as the surface sunlight spilled over them. Sunlight can kill at any time. The longer you remain here, the more danger you're in. Perhaps they stayed because Estval is as beautiful as anywhere in the Neath, and ten times as generous. It's a fine place for a colony. You could found your own pocket kingdom if you could do something about the sun. But what? What has power over sunlight? What makes the impossible possible? So we got a memory of distant shores. This is sort of an interesting little island, and I think it's going to play into our plans later on in the game very, very much so. I would suggest we can either go beachcombing, which is the generic event you get on a lot of different items. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get our Your Eyes Water, the pages blur. The report is one of joy-filled complaint. Estval has a beauty too bright to be appreciated, but perhaps the Admiralty can find something of use. And let's gather supplies, sure. Breadfruit, sugarcane, coconut, soft-shelled crabs, and plump birds too stupid to know a hungry zailer from a tree. Estval is ripe with treasures unknown in the neath. Fill your hold. And indeed we did. That actually put our hold almost up to full. Uh, my suggestion next would be to find a place to unload some of these supplies because there's absolutely no need. I'll keep an eye on it and I'll kind of see how many supplies we have left by the time we get back to London. I'm sure we'll eat through probably four or five of them by the time we get there. But if nothing else, we might be able to turn a tidy little profit that way too. Also, you could pick up supplies here. You could take them back up north to the Monkey Island for some kind of bonus. I think it gives you favor or something like that. I don't recall exactly. We should have the fuel to make it back to London without too many problems if we don't stress ourselves about using the lamp. And because our terror is so low, I think everything's going to be just fine. I think it's all going to work out. Off we sail. So if we could make port at Khan's Shadow, Khan's Heart, hit all that kind of stuff. I know we did pick up a secret. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's the, uh, the Ratter's Island. Yeah. It's Nuncio. We'll get a quick port report here, but we're not going to stay. This storyline would take us well into the next episode. And probably, I want to get the Zub. I really, really want to get the Zub. So we'll deal with Nuncio a little bit later. Do we just pick up yet another secret? I don't mind. That's perfectly fine by me. We'll go in. Do not return to sender. Taciturn functionaries walk the docks in the uniforms of postmen. An enormous crown statue casts a chilling shadow. The shadows gleam with rat's eyes. Their ceaseless chittering rolls like a tide. We will get our port report. There's a statue in the middle of the island. That's hard to miss. There's the way everybody wears a uniform and the way they call each other by their ranks in the postal service. There's the way the port authorities refer to regulations. There's the jargon, the curious habit of referring to any used up thing as canceled, as though the whole world were made of stamps. You write about vestigial bureaucracy and about the trappings of order retained far from home. And then we'll just be on our... Actually, can I sell supplies here? They will buy for five. I'll sell three supplies for right now, and then we'll head on out. We might be able to offset our hunger a little bit elsewhere, too. We're trying to make it to Khan's Heart by the end of the episode. Don't think we're going to make it, but my name is Splattercat. This is my series on the expansion of Sunless Sea, Submariner. In the next episode to the episode after that, I swear to God, I keep saying it, and I feel so guilty for it, but there's a run-up in this game. This game is supposed to be played at a slow pace. This is not a game where you're supposed to be able to achieve all the Vorpal long blades within, like, the first five seconds, and so... Just be aware, it's not a game for that type of player. It's a game for the people that like to move slowly, read everything, enjoy the storyline, and as you enjoy the storyline, you will eventually start hitting some of these thresholds that make you more powerful. I will see you all in tomorrow's episode of Sunless Sea. I hope you've liked it so far. Hi, do everybody. Stay delicious.